outside tech rep with Fox Racing Shocks and today we're going to go over air sleeve maintenance on our rear air shocks. This is a really important thing for you to do and it's really simple and it's really inexpensive. We have one seal kit available that is universal. It will service every shock we've made from 2000 to 2010 and probably beyond. Uh, but it's a great kit. It retails at $6.50 and like I said, it'll work with any air shock we've made since 2000. Today we're going to be working on the RP23, all right? And anytime I'm going to be working on any product that has an air valve, the first step is to always uh, let the pressure out. But before we do anything, we're going to make sure that we have our safety glasses on, okay? And I'm going to let all the pressure out of here so I know it's safe to work on. And in your shops or in your garage, you'd clamp this eyelet in a vise with soft jaws and it'll help you remove this air sleeve. Okay. If you let the pressure out of the shock and it wants to collapse on itself, that's a signal that you have a problem. Okay? Air has transferred from your main chamber into your negative chamber and you won't be able to bleed it out through your air valve. So the only difference between servicing a normal healthy shock and doing regular maintenance and servicing a shock that has that stuck down condition is the way you take it apart. Once it's apart, you've released that pressure and you can do the service like you would any other shock. So the thing you need to be careful with when you take these apart. If it's stuck down, make sure you take a shop rag, a cloth rag, not a paper towel, not a screwdriver, not your finger, but a nice cloth rag there. And when you unthread this air sleeve, if there's any trapped pressure in there, when you get to that last thread, it's going to want to come off in a hurry and that rag is going to stop it safely. Okay. So when you get to that last thread, if there was any pressure left in there, it would come off and make a little bang. We don't have a problem, so we can go ahead and remove this rag from the eyelet and take that air sleeve the rest of the way off. Okay? So in here you can see this is your main air seal and it separates this positive chamber from this tiny little negative chamber right on this side of that seal. Okay? So what we need to do is replace all these seals and it's really simple to do. We have our universal kit available by calling 1-800-FOX-SHOCKS or going to your local bike shop. Okay, the kit is all inclusive. It has everything you need including float fluid to lubricate everything when we go to put this back together. Okay. All right. So we're going to pull off all the old seals and we need to be careful that when we do this we don't scratch into the seal surfaces. Okay. So I tend to pinch these up and then you can get beneath them very easily and pull these off. Okay. This is your air seal here. And I'm gently getting underneath it without scratching into the aluminum at all. This is what we call a quad ring. Okay? And it's sandwiched between two backup rings. They just keep it all straight when it's sliding against the air sleeve. Okay? You also have an O-ring that lives up here in the eyelet. It's kind of tough to see, but I'm getting it out pretty easily here. Okay? And that's all the seals off the main part of the shock here. We have some more seals in the end of our air sleeve. The first seal here is our dust wiper. Okay. And then beneath that we have another sandwich. We have another quad ring and two backup rings, one on either side. And instead of digging behind them and potentially scratching into my air sleeve, I'd rather just stab into the material of the seal and pull it out that way because I know I'm not going to reuse these seals so I don't mind stabbing into them, okay? Just pull it out just like that without even touching our aluminum, okay? When you have this apart, take a second to clean everything out really well. We use isopropyl alcohol, okay? I wouldn't use any chemical solvents or degreasers. Any residue you leave in there is just going to break down your seal lubricant. Okay, so we can go ahead and turn around and reinstall these new seals. We'll start on the shock here. Anytime I have a fresh rubber seal out of the kit, I'm going to want to get a little lubricant on it inside and out. I see a lot of people put seals on and then put some grease around the outside. That's not how we do it. You got to make sure that that inner surface of the seal is just as lubricated as the outer surface. And this o-ring gets tucked up right into the eyelid. Just fell right into place there. Okay. Next we're going to lubricate the inside and out 
of our quadrant. Okay. And this isn't directional. It doesn't matter which direction you put it on, as long as when you get it on it's not twisted around itself, it's in good shape. These backup rings are split, and where they overlap, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. So make sure you're paying attention to that when you get it on there. Let's just wrap right around. One on each side. This is a little easier to do it when you actually have it clamped in a vise, but if I can do it with greasy hands and no vise, you guys should be able to do it at home with your vise, no problem. Okay. And now we're going to install the seals on the end of the air sleeve. And we work from the inside and we just stack them until we get out to the end. So the first part is that innermost backup ring. And if you just kind of make it look like a taco a little bit, you can tuck it into place, hold it in the groove, and work the rest of it around. Next we have our quad ring again. A little lube inside and out on this. Same taco action, tuck it right above that backup ring and in place. And slide all this down as far as you can go because this next backup ring only has its width in space to fit into. So this one can be a little tough. You can taco it again. You can usually get it started. You see I've got it started and I hold it in place and then I just work the rest of it around. When you get to the end, it's going to want to curl on itself. That's okay. As long as you don't tear it or crease it or really crimp it, it's okay. Just work it into place. And what I do is I take my thumb and I go all the way around, pushing the seals against the outside to make sure they're seated properly. The dust wiper isn't something that I'm going to lubricate because it's an external part of your shock. And any extra lubricant on the outside of your shock is just going to attract grit and grime on the trail and that's going to wear against this smooth, anodized air seal surface on your body. We don't want any damage to that body, so it's important to keep this shock really clean. We recommend that you clean them after every ride. A little soap and water will do just fine. When I go to reassemble this, I want to put just a little bit of lube on these seals, just a drop or so there. Work it around, coat that inner surface. I'm going to do the same thing right here on these seals. Go all the way around, and then when I go slide this together, I can put a little extra in here just to squirt. You know, if you poured it out on your worktop, it would, you know, be about the size of a nickel. So about that volume of fluid right there, just enough to slosh around inside your air chamber and keep your seals lubricated until the next time you crack open this shock. We recommend that you service these shocks every eight to forty hours, depending on your riding conditions. So it's a really easy service for you to do to make sure your shock's going to run right for a long time. And when we slide that air sleeve on, we trap a volume of air in our negative chamber, and it's going to resist compression. It's going to be tough to hook these threads, right? So the trick here is to turn your rebound to full slow, and then if you want to follow me to the ground here for a second, you can compress the shock, and with that rebound at full slow, it'll rebound so slowly you can see it just barely rebounding. You'll have plenty of time to thread that together. All right. And we only want this to be hand tight. Once you get it snug, that's all you need. This would normally be clamped in my vise, and you just get it nice and snug. You shouldn't ever need any tools to assemble this. If it's tough to take apart, you can clean it up nicely and use a strap wrench to get it un unthreaded from the eyelet. But you should never tighten it more than hand tight. And the kit comes with an indicator o-ring, so once you've done the service and you're ready to bolt this back on your bike, you can set your sag properly and we recommend using whatever pressure it takes to achieve about 25% sag. So when you sit on the bike in your riding position, this is a one inch stroke shock, you want to see this shock compressed by about a quarter of an inch. And it's that simple.